Hello everybody, it's good to see you again. Uh, we're gonna be doing another roast today. So I haven't done one of these in a while. But today, we're gonna be trying to uh, taste some of this blue Haitian organic coffee. It's a washed coffee, so it should be fairly clean when roasted. So let's just go over some of the details of the coffee. As is, you hear from the name, it's from Haiti. It's a washed coffee. It's farmed at 1,200 meters. And some of the notes that Coffee Bean Corral likes to give you is it's sort of nutty, sort of fruity, and a little buttery mouth taste. As a few of you may know in the coffee world, there's a variety of coffee called Jamaican Blue Mountain. This is actually not so far off of Jamaican Blue Mountain as Jamaican Blue Mountain is sort of a, it's a typica that's been mutated for that specific region in Jamaica. And these uh, coffee beans can be grown at a variety of different altitudes. So I know in Jamaica they can get up to 7,000 meters, if I'm not mistaken. So they can be a very dense cup of coffee. This is grown at a little bit lower region, but it should be about the same sort of taste, but with a mutation specific to Haiti. All right, so with any sort of roast, we want to have a roaster. So today, you know, bringing out this old thing. Uh, this is sort of like a small popcorn roaster that I found from Amazon. I just like the colors of it. Um, you know, it's a pretty decent popcorn popper. Uh, I actually never use it for coffee or for popcorn, but it's mainly just a coffee roaster that I like to use. Um, it's pretty much just any popcorn popper that has like the, the vents kind of blow in a circle. So that just circulates air a little bit easier in the coffee. So usually I like to measure out maybe like 70 grams, 80 grams for coffee for this machine. Um, I just put some foil on top just to make sure the beans don't like bounce out or get out of, like while it's during the roasting process, but you'll see. Yeah, and 70 grams is about, I don't know, three scoops of these. This is just like a protein powder scoop that my brother has, and it just comes with a lot of like stuff, so I just use it just for coffee. Yeah, about like 80 grams right there. Uh, usually when you do roast, the coffee weight kind of loses a little bit just from like water loss or like shedding of its skin. All right, so now that's all kind of measured out, let's go take it outside and begin to roast. Hey, all right guys, so probably wondering why there's like this big fuzzy ball around my chest, but uh, you know, that's a good reason for it. As you can see, it's, it's sort of like a fairly windy day, you know, Hurricane Douglas hidden and all that, but you know, don't panic. So one of the first things you want to have when you're sort of roasting is you kind of want to have like a colander or something. So maybe even like a bowl, but preferably <laughs> um, something with like holes in it just to like aerate the beans and cool it down right as you bring it off of the, the roaster. As you see with a lot of like the big roasteries, they have like this big cooling tray with sort of like blades or just fins just to like move around the beans and that's just to cool it down so when it comes off of the roaster it goes down to this cooling tray and it just kind of mixes the beans and sort of cools it down just so you can get that right correct roast profile that you really want rather than it's still cooking like while it's trying to cool down so right now what i want to go for is sort of like a medium light roast medium light roasts are pretty hard to achieve but I would say once you see like first crack and a little bit after that to have some of that development, um, that's when you can really get some of the good like flavor notes out of the coffee rather than something that's really dark and burnt. We'll uh, get right into it pretty soon. Okay, so now we kind of have a good angle of the coffee right now. And once you turn it up, the beans are going to be a little bit heavy when um, first starting out, so you just really want to shake it up 
and let a lot of uh, agitation to the beans. Because what you don't want is over scorching of your beans for it to get a little too hot. And you want to have it sort of have that, that natural circulation of the beans. So I just hate a little bit just to make sure that no scorching of the beans get too uneven. And then generally just let it do its thing. And you kind of want to leave it like this until first crack. And then you can probably just do some more agitation just as some of the, the silver skin or the chaff kind of flows off of the beans. And you just want to make sure that you're outside or somewhere where you can kind of contain all the chaff because once it gets going, it's going to be very uncontrollable and you see all of this chaff is going to be flowing out. Yeah, and so now you can see the, the roast is darkening a little bit. Um, it's probably around maybe three minutes in, towards the roast. Um, make sure you always time your beans. And you can see the color is changing a little bit. As you can hear, uh, first crack is happening right now. It's sort of like a rolling crack. Just, just agitate your beans a little bit more, just so things get a little bit more even. And then you can kind of let it rest. Yeah, just make sure it cools down. Oh! But uh, yeah, so that was kind of a, some good fun out there. Um, let's go actually see how much uh, kind of yielded from this. Uh, where the heck is my... Hello? Ah. Um, yeah, let's go see how much uh, we kind of yielded from this coffee. So it was 85 grams, I believe. Okay, so 70 grams. If we do the math right, um, probably like uh, maybe 10 to 15% weight loss, but not too bad. So we got 70 grams. Generally, um, kind of a small coffee bag would yield you around like 300 grams. So the unfortunate thing about popcorn poppers is that you kind of have to cut down a lot of the weight because it sort of restricts the airflow allowed to move around the coffee beans. So if you put too much, it kind of chokes off the, the air. So it burns the coffee too fast, too little coffee, which I don't know necessarily why you want to brew smaller amounts. But if you don't put enough coffee in there, there would be too much airflow and you would just take forever with your roast. And it might be able to make the coffee a little bit more evenly roasted, but at around like six minutes 20 seconds it was kind of a sunny day so along with the heat from the sun um, kind of roasting time is variable but I would say for this particular variety of beans it takes about like three minutes to get first crack and then I would spend around either two to three minutes depending on if I'm roasting the, in the morning in the afternoon or at night on the development I just want to take a look at the color of the beans and if I like the color, if I want it to be a little bit more lighter, uh, so I would taste a little bit more of like the grassier kind of vegetable notes of the coffee, but also a little bit more of the origin characteristics, which is like that fruity, like buttery, smooth uh, taste. It would be more in the medium. And if I want to brew more espresso roast, it would be probably a little bit longer for maybe around like eight minutes, eight to 10 minutes, depending on the heat and the weather. I, I definitely wouldn't really want to go through second crack. A full round of second crack is a little bit too dark for me. So kind of the beginning of second cracks. With roasting beans, there is, there's a, there's a few stages between roasting beans. There's sort of like the, the yellowing stage or the drying stage, and then it goes into yellowing stage. And then the browning into first crack and then more development. And then there's another release of CO2, which is the second crack. So as I refer to first and second crack, 
All of this is is just the heating up of the beans builds up CO2 with inside the beans and it pops. So all of the water, all of the gas in the beans pop and that's what you hear as the, the cracks. Uh, there's still a lot of CO2 within these beans. So if you want to store these, I would just recommend storing them in like a, a plastic container like this and just pop the lid. But you know, I don't necessarily uh, care too much about you know the build up of pressure because it ne not necessarily happened to me. Um, I just put it in a straight mason jar. So, Ooh. and mason jar is good enough for me. Kind of stores everything pretty well. And generally by this time, what a lot of roasters would do, especially on like days off or time where they're not open, so generally on the weekends or kind of early morning on the weekends, they would actually grind this up and uh, brew it right away, and that's called like the cupping. Um, maybe I won't do it now, but I generally would uh, actually just wait till next morning to drink this up. Um, you can drink this and brew it right away, but it's just gonna take a very long time because of a lot of the CO2 built up inside the beans, kind of makes it bloom way too much so it will just take a longer time brewing the coffee where um you just wait until next morning the co2 and the gas build up um, makes a, a brew much easier so i'll just leave this in a dark place kind of nicely sealed and wait till next day so see you probably tomorrow or maybe in a couple of days and we'll actually taste the coffee. Oh, 